Hello beautiful people and welcome to another rip, roar and whatever that means episode of Techspert Weekly, the show that brings you all that hot tech news a mere four or five days after it actually happened so it still tastes super fresh. And this week, come sit on Uncle Spurt's lap and get yourself all cosy as we run through the launch of the Xiaomi 12S series over in China, including this friggin' behemoth right here, the 12S Ultra, which boasts some proper cracking camera tech. Also, Asus has spaffed out a couple of super beefy new ROG gaming phones, and I'm possibly in the middle of some sort of emotional breakdown, not entirely sure, um, maybe we'll sort of see what happens. So lots of stuff to uh, to crack on with. So I guess do the do the jingle thing. Techspert Weekly. So this week's big tech woo-ha came courtesy of Xiaomi, who performed an almighty crotch thrust at the competition by launching its latest trio of super spec smartphones. These are the Xiaomi 12s, the even mightier Xiaomi 12s Pro, and the captain big cock of the group, the Xiaomi 12s Ultra. All three of them Boston camera tech co-engineered with Huawei's ex bestie Leica. The regular Xiaomi 12S is tastily compact like the original Xiaomi 12, packing a near 6.3 inch 120Hz AMOLED panel and another 4500mAh battery with 67W wide and 50W wireless charging. However, while the original Xiaomi 12 was running Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chips at a very capable platform indeed, that actually gets upgraded on the Xiaomi 12S Pro to the fresh new Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 for even more grunt, especially when gaming. Well, let's hope that Xiaomi's cool and tech can keep up with it as well, just as it did here on the original Xiaomi 12. And this S model also upgrades you to a 50 meg Sony IMX707 camera sensor, plus the usual ultra wide and tele macro shenanigans. That's actually the same camera tech as found on the original Xiaomi 12 Pro, which again did a bang up job for your everyday pics and movies. Got a bit of image stabilization, particularly handy if you've had a skin fall trying to shoot a few low light shots. But of course, now you've got those Leica branded lenses, so it'll be interesting to see if this partnership has had any effect so far this early on. And like the original 12 Pro, the fresh new 12S Pro boosts the size dramatically, serving up a 6.7 inch LTPO AMOLED screen, now with a Quad HD resolution rather than Full HD. The slightly bigger battery supports faster 120Hz wired charging as well as wireless. And you've got a triple 50 meg rear camera arrangement including ultra wide and zoom options. So the 12S Pro, certainly on paper at least, doesn't seem dramatically different from this here 12 Pro apart from the fact you've got the upgrades to the platform to so that Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. But the real star of the show here is the Xiaomi 12S Ultra, an absolute freaking monster that frankly would probably eat other smartphones for breakfast and then follow it up by belting your dad right in the junk and running off with your mum. For one, the camera has been leveled up to the point that it takes up half the f***ing back, making the Ultra look more like some sort of portable cooking hob than an actual smartphone. That 50 meg Sony IMX989 primary sensor is a 1 inch beast, and while 1 inches may not sound particularly impressive, in sensor terms it's basically like Jason Momoa stood on top of a friggin concrete mixer. So the Xiaomi 12S Ultra should be shit hot at low light photography, unless of course they ballsed it up somehow. That Leica branded aspheric lens will apparently help prevent ghosting, flaring and other issues caused by strong light, where you can also expect 8K video capture and some official Leica filters. And that primary lens is backed by an ultra wide shooter and also an improved periscope zoom lens, you're basically set for any situation. The Xiaomi 12S Ultra is the only one of this fresh trio with IP68 water resistance and it also comes in a choice of black or green, both with a charming fake leather finish. The battery capacity is again slightly bigger compared with the Xiaomi 12S Pro, although the charging technology has somewhat dramatically dropped to just 67 watts. And the rest of the phone seems to be pretty much the same as the 12S Pro from the display tech to that cock swinging Snapdragon chipset. Here's hoping that Xiaomi will actually eventually launch these phones for the Western markets so we can test out these Leica legends for ourselves, although there's no plans right now to launch in the UK or the US, boo hiss etc. Also this week, Asus launched another beefcake smartphone, the ROG Phone 6, which also comes in this here Pro flavour, which looks even more like an extraterrestrial sex aid. No kidding, this smartphone is an absolute brick shit house with all of the usual light up flare and shenanigans going on. Like those Xiaomi blowers, you've once again got the fresh Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset, which can smash its way through anything you throw at it. And yeah, that does include a good bit of Wordle as well. One of these friggin' days is going to be spurt. Just one of these days. You've got loads of great gaming features stuffed on here, and of course, a fantastic range of accessories if you want to spunk even more money at Zeus, Why not? 
And even the camera doesn't suck too bad at all, which is quite remarkable for a gaming smartphone. And anyway, I've done you a full unboxing, gaming review, etc. right here on TechSperts. Go check that out if you give a shit. But anyway, those were the big tech launches of the week. So now it's time for the part of the show that's possibly even worse than the bit that you just watched. So just fair warning, it's viewer comments. Viewer comments. <laughs> Alrighty then, let's kick off this week with Bry Johnston, hello Bry, who says, I watch your videos when I'm having my breakfast of boiled eggs, they remind me of your bonds, so I pretend I'm eating your brains. <laughs> oh god! Okay, I think, I think that's me done, like seriously, one, one comment in and I just, I can't handle it man, Jesus tap dancing Christ. Uh, thanks for writing in, Bri. Um, next up, uh, let's have Griff, who says, uh, so I'm getting that huge fan of the iPhone SE vibes. Uh, after my, uh, my little rant last week about the iPhone SE 2022. Yeah, if you've seen my review of that steam and power, you know, I'm not exactly overflown with adoration for it. I mean, frankly, I would actually rather jump off a cliff with a bungee cord strapped around my scrotum than I would use an iPhone SE 2022. I'd rather strip off and creep up on an angry grizzly bear before jumping out yelling surprise and slapping him right in the face with my flaccid cock. I'd rather be strapped up to one of those clockwork orange machines and forced to watch Mrs. Brown's Boys and James Corden on repeat, all in an underground soundproof bunker so no one could hear my screams. I'd rather have an enema with bees. A bee enema. Anyway, you get the picture. Uh, we've got lots of HTC love in these comments after last week's coverage of the Desire 22 Pro. Uh, Colton says, one of the best phone brands, great to see them back in the game. Uh, Moss says, great to see them slightly come back from the dead, kinda. Lana Fox says, I miss HTC and Sony, they disappeared in my country, now I'm using an iPhone and waiting for them to return. Ugh, you, you poor bastards. Uh, I just hope it's not an SE 2022, is all I can say. Uh, Eric says, a modern take of the metal-bodied HTC One line with all of the latest high-end bits. The world needs this during these stagnant times of boring glass sandwiches. Yeah, gone are the days when manufacturers used to go a little bit crazy with the, the back ends of their smartphones. I'm thinking of obviously like the metal HTCs, you had the, uh, the leathery LGs, which were very funky indeed. Although at least you got the, uh, the old fake leather on the Xiaomi 12S Ultra, and uh, it was Oppo, wasn't it, who did uh, the Find X2 Pro, I think, had the, the fake leather option as well. So sort of sporadically you get something a bit more interesting. And I've had a few comments asking me if I reckon that metal backs will ever make a comeback on, uh, on smartphones. And yeah, I mean, never say never, but I mean, you've got to come up with a way of making those antenna bands look good. And of course, next week, we're going to the launch of a smartphone whose back end lights up like a friggin' Christmas tree. So who even knows what's going to happen next? Uh, Stephen here isn't too impressed by that Desire smartphone, and he agrees with Eric. I think most HTC fans would like to see a modern take on the HTC One with slimmer bezels and front-facing speakers. And likewise, killer 1984 able says, M8 was genuinely one of the greatest phones of all time. And Jeff says, I still use my HTC 10 as a backup phone, great for music using earphones. And that's a pretty good show actually, using an older compact smartphone as a, just like an MP3 player or something like that, something simple, just make sure you don't browse anything dodgy online because the last time that thing received any security updates, you could probably cough out in public without old women screaming and scurrying away. In fact, the last time the HTC 10 received a security update, Johnny Depp was probably still considered cool. So yeah, keep the backup for music playback, simple shiz like that, and do all your hentai browsing on your main phone, definitely. And next up, Rizo says, please reassemble the geniuses behind the HTC One front face and speakers. 100%, sir, definitely. Uh, Franklin Goodwin, again, same sort of comment. My last HTC phone was the One M7. Loved the front face and speakers with that Beats audio. Man, I absolutely loved those boom sound stereo speakers on those HTC smartphones, mostly because it allowed me to shout BOOM SOUND right in the middle of my HTC reviews and scare the shit out of everyone. They were definitely well ahead of their time with those things as well. I can't remember off the top of my head like Sony or anyone else doing proper front fire and stereo speakers on a smartphone before HTC did it. Of course, my beer adult state, I'm probably forgetting about a half dozen smartphones at least, and I'm sure everyone will clue me in on the comments below so we can uh, we can discuss what a total f***ing dumbass I am next week. 
Anyway, that's enough HTC reminiscence for now. Uh, Marius says, I also needed three tries for my driver's license because the first time I failed the theory test, overconfidence at its finest, and second time I was so nervous I tried to drive off from full stop in third gear. I mean, that is easily done, mate. It's some nerve wracking shit. Your brain is just all over the place. A full hour of it as well. It's, it's pretty intense stuff. Uh, but then on the subject of the theory test as well, I do wonder how well I would actually do at that if I took it like right now, even though I've been driving for 24 years. I mean, I'm literally struggling to think of how many years I've even had a driver's license. So I'd have absolutely f all chance with stopping distances or anything like that. And next up, Anchor says, when will you start reviewing EV tech? I mean, I'd be well up for reviewing electric cars if I actually knew the first sodden thing about them. I already have to blag my way around most of the forms of technology, but when it comes to cars, I'm just utterly clueless, man. My knowledge of cars literally begins and ends with pushing pedals and occasionally replacing the windscreen washer fluid. That said, I have actually been thinking about upgrading to an electric car recently, mostly because the price of petrol can go f itself right up its overinflated arsehole. I've heard good things about the, the Kia range, uh, especially like the EV6 and stuff. I think they've just refreshed that one, so I'm sure at some point I'll stagger my way into a showroom and the salesperson will rub their hands together in absolute glee at the sight of the muggins here. Oh, I quite like the look of that one. Do you do it in green? Uh, next up, Sarcastically Anonymous says, Uncle Spurt, I always look forward to amazing Techspert Weekly episodes and I'm never disappointed. You see, if your username didn't actually have the word sarcastic in the title, I might have actually gone out on a limb and said you were being 100% truthful right there. Uh, Pizzo says, the dirty jokes from this guy are so fresh, I want to be like him when I grow up. I mean, just please don't say that, Pezzo. The last thing I need right now is angry parents turning up at my doorstep with pitchforks, accusing me of ruining their children. And I mean, seriously, there are some actual good role models out there. Um, Bill Gates, he's clever and he gives money to charities, right? Uh, you know, just anyone who's just not a YouTuber, basically, because let's face it, we're, we're a f***ing awful bunch. I mean, I'm literally a bald guy who earns a living talking to himself in his garage. You know, you, you do not want to aspire to this, believe me. Anyway, last couple of comments, because massively run out of time, got literally a minute and a half. Uh, so BNS <coughs> says, I've got a bottle of that Appleton Estate rum in my home bar. It's quite sharp and not as raisiny as I usually like my rums, but it's good for the price. Sold. And Jacob from Wuhan, hey, Jacob, how's it going, sir? Says, hey, Uncle Spurs, I'm finally leaving Wuhan this week. Looking forward to watching your videos without a VPN. Oh, mate, it feels like end of an era for proper. Jacob from Wuhan is no longer Jacob from Wuhan. Um, let us know where you're moving to, mate, and uh, safe travels and everything. Hope it goes well. Let's hope the next place you end up doesn't literally unleash a minor Armageddon on the planet. And Martin says, ooh, drifters, love those. They did a banana flavour in the mid-90s, still the best choco bar I've ever had. Ooh, banana drifters. And those were absolutely passed me by. Anyway, a massive thank you to everyone who commented uh, on last week's show. Fantastic reading through those, as always. Even the ones about scooping the top of my head off and eating my brains. Apologies if we didn't quite get to yours, but please do put your comments down below and we will smash our way through as many of those as possible next week. And speaking of next week... This is about next week. Next week, I've got two tech launches in the diary, and they're both unfortunately happen on Tuesday, the 12th of July. It's a Nokia launch, followed by the Nothing launch. Nokia, of course, there's been rumours about fresh new tablets and feature phones kicking around, so we'll see what they spaff out then. I'll hopefully get a bit of coverage on the go for you. Nothing, of course, we already basically know what the Nothing phone's all about. I covered all of the specs and features and everything in last week's show after that massive leak. But you know, it's a friggin' disco form, so I'm still slightly excited about all that. So please do join me for a bit more hot tech chat this time next week. I've got lots of other coverage that I'm planning for next week as well. So uh, please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell if you haven't already. And have yourselves a bloody lovely weekend. As always, love you guys.